Well, welcome, Will. Congratulations, uh, signed with the Braves, and you're officially now Braves alumni. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we uh, want to welcome you. We didn't get a chance to get to see the press conference a little bit, but mm-hmm. I'm sure that was – it seemed like that was short and sweet. Yeah, it was, you know, not much to say. You know, you're coming to a winning team. There so you that's, go. That's all you need. Know. Well, welcome to Behind the Braves, um, the official podcast of the Braves. So, we're glad to catch you before things get a little crazy during the season. And, and – uh, so anyway, this is a good time for us to get let our fans get to know you a little bit more and and uh, talk about what's going on in your life besides right. just just signing here with the Braves. Well, we're glad to have you. Sounds good. Glad to be here. Yeah. So out of Noonan, Georgia. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the God's country down there. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Tennessee, Noonan. That's yeah. that's pretty close, yeah, right? Close. There you go. <laughs> so did you happen to know um, the Bedrosians at all growing up? I work out with Cam Bedrosian. You do in okay. the off season. Yeah, he's okay. a, you know a good friend of mine. Um, you know, we kind of have, I think it's like five or six pro guys in the, in our area down there. Um, we were all work out together at the same place. Um, you know, we go to wing nights on Wednesdays together. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Cam's, Cam's part of that group. Um, good Very friend nice. of mine. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Bedrock, his dad, yep. um, he was my mentor. Mm-hmm. So, when I came in as a rookie in the bullpen, he had already won a Cy Young Award winner. Okay. And uh, great guy. So I know he's. He told me the other day he was working out with Cam. Yeah. So well, good. Well, you're in. You're with a good group down yeah, there. Yeah, good guys down there. Yeah, there's been some great players coming out of that, yeah. that neck of the woods. Yeah, Dwight Smith with the Orioles too, uh, left right. fielder. Um, he's in that area. He works out with us too. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some two uh, two new guys this year. But yeah, we got a, we got a pretty solid group down there. Well, good. Well, we're uh, we're looking for good. Looking at uh, some good things happening this year. I got to go back and look a little bit about your. Uh, you know, watch your career. And uh, just check out what kind of pitcher you are and mm-hmm. um, watching a little bit of video on YouTube, which is always nice, <laughs> yeah. right? So uh, you're you're a lefty closer. Mm-hmm. So there hadn't been a whole lot of those guys. You know, I was looking back, I was thinking about, okay, I played against Randy Myers and, and then John Franco, um, David, you know who those guys are, right? David Getty, yeah. Yeah, David Getty. Getty was my now, pitching was he, coach. Yeah, that's right. Pitching coach out in San Francisco. Billy Wagner. Billy Wagner, mm-hmm. Braves alumni, yeah. So, um, you know, that's a small group. Mm-hmm. It's not a big group, so but I really like what you what you were doing using your curveball a lot and mm-hmm. and uh, look like you throw a lot of strikes, which is always a good Try sign to, for yeah, a closer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're glad to have you. I think you're in a great place. Uh, this team's obviously locked and loaded for some time, and mm-hmm. and we just we're trying to find the right fit, right? Yeah. And uh, what what's going to get this team over the hump? So tell us a little bit about why you chose Atlanta and why this is such a great fit for you. Um, you know, one, obviously being from here, um, but the main goal this offseason going in when I told my agency was I want to I want to win. Um, I want a chance at the ring. I want to go to the playoffs. I've only been once, and I was in 16. Um, we got knocked out by the Cubs the first round. So, But just to get that little taste, it was, you know, this is this is what you want. This is what you're here for. Um, so you never want to go home early now. Uh, but, you know, being so close to home, getting to see my family more, that was that's just a huge bonus to the mm-hmm. side of this thing. But the main goal was is we want I want to win. Um and Atlanta fits that, you know, perfectly. Yeah, we would agree. <laughs> well first of all, hearing that you, you go to wing night every Wednesday, that's I can finally say so I have something in common with profes- a professional athlete. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's me, wing night, always there. <laughs> um, wing nuts or wing night? Wing nuts? Ah, either, either. Wing, yeah, wing sure. nuts is a restaurant here in town, <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of wing night, like in college, every Tuesday oh, we had yes. wing There you go. Anyways, uh, so I assume growing up in Noonan, uh, you, you had to have been a Braves fan growing yeah. up, right? Okay. okay, who was your guy growing up? Who was uh, your player? The, the staff, um, okay. Tom Glavin, you know, Greg Maddox, John Smoltz. Just kinda, pick one, yeah, right? Take your yeah. pick, man. They're, <laughs> right. all, they're all great. Um, Marquis Grissom, mm-hmm. Fred McGriff. I mean, I can keep going for a mm-hmm. while here. Uh it's yeah, one so of our favorite topics to yes, talk about the 90s. Up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, grew up, uh, we grew up big fans. That's, I had that poster when I was growing up, the Four Aces poster, mm-hmm. where each of those guys were mm-hmm. on, the, on the cards. Mm-hmm. And it is, kind of, it is kind of like how do you pick one of those. Yeah. It's just that every night you tuned in to watch those guys. Um, I, I know that you, you say you wanted to you want to go to a winner, but in the back of your mind was, was playing for your hometown team, staying at home. I mean, that had to be, that had to at least carry some weight in addition to wanting to win, didn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, anytime you can be around your family more, I think that's a positive. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, I've got two little nieces too. So like even just little things like that, Uncle Will gets to hang out a little more. Was one of them at the press conference up there? Yeah. Okay, both, of them, both of them were. Both of them were, okay. But Lainey was probably the older one. She just turned three last Saturday. 
Um, so yeah, she's a, she's a little wild child, but she's she's, <laughs> a, lot of, she's a lot of fun. Um, but you know, they used to be afraid of me. I'd go out in San Francisco and then come back and come play mm-hmm. the Braves, and they'd cry the moment I touched them. And it's like, <laughs> oh, who's this weird stranger? <laughs> He's so uh, big. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's nice to be able to come home. But I mean, the, the main thing was coming to a mm-hmm. competing, contending team, and and the family stuff is just a huge bonus. Yeah. You can't put a price tag on sleeping in your own bed and no. eating your own food, right? Mm-hmm. Do you like? You can only go out so many times and it's still going yeah. out, right? Yeah. Well, um, let us understand a little bit more about what you like to do. So is there like a charity you're involved in or um, what kind of stuff you like to do off the field? Are you a golfer? You like to fish? Yeah, hunt? I, you know, I like to golf. I like to hunt and fish. Okay. Um, yeah, just the regular old guy, yeah. I guess. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, but, yeah, definitely. I enjoy I enjoy getting in the woods. Good. Yeah, well, there's that's some good places down there, there right, to hunt. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can get you out on Marquise's land. He's got all kinds of farmland down there. Yeah, he does, he, yeah. Yeah, he's a lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, um, is there a, a charitable organization that you're involved with or that uh, are you looking for something like that or yeah, to get involved um, with? Yeah, you know, obviously now with, with a new contract now, that's one of the first things I've, I did want to do. Um, uh, is, is start a foundation and a charity right now. It's, I do Joey's Toy Box, um, which is a old uh, high school teammate of mine. It was his cousin um, and passed away. And now it's just mm. that they have a motorcycle ride and, and all that stuff. Um, I do the, the Southwest Christian Care Golf Tournament down at yeah. Canagate every year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking now to, to kind of make an impression now in the community, um, especially with it being my home. Um, but, yeah, some somewhere well, down great. the road start this. Yeah, that's <clears> the – one of yeah. the first things I wanted to do. Uh, so, yeah. That's awesome. Well, you're in good company. There's about 65, you may not know this, 65 alumni, Braves alumni that live in the Atlanta area. Nice. So I'm the director of alumni relations. We've got just great participation with the guys, and we do stuff all around um, this area with, uh, you know, we still probably have about maybe 10 guys who have their own either charities or heavily involved with somebody, whether it's Phil Necro and mm-hmm. Marquise Grissom and, Brian Jordan. So we've got a lot of guys here that we're, you know, we're there to support you, um, you know, between now and, and whenever your careers are with and beyond. So we, we've got some cool things going on here, Atlanta, that I haven't personally seen around other organizations. Mm-hmm. You know, I talk with alumni guys all the time, directors, especially with other teams, and uh, we've got a very unique situation here. And so we're all very supportive. We're around. We're watching the games. Guys come and check it out. So Hopefully that's something we can support you on in the future. But right. um, but we're glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about what the fans can expect from you as a pitcher. Um, a, a competitor, I guess. I I really hate losing. I hate. <laughs> that's I hate good. It. Um, it makes me really mad. Um, but yeah, I just I I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. Um, you know, more times than not, I'll probably have a smile on my face. But mm. in between the white lines, it's a little different story. Um, I'm gonna try to do my job every single night but i know it's a long season some nights it's just not my night um go ahead and apologize for that in advance but, <laughs> that's right but for the most part i will try to do my job every single night um that's about well, it well that's the life of a reliever right you gotta yeah, have right. short-term memory very loss. short <laughs> <That's right. laughs> very. it's a long season and you've you've been a, a pitcher that's traditionally you've gone 70 you know 60 70 uh, appearances a year mm-hmm. that's not easy to do mm-hmm. and now you've got hopefully you know those innings won't be as tough you know as a closer you know we want to keep those just nice one two three with a three run lead and and uh (laughs) get in there and get out right yeah absolutely well as i was watching some of your pitching uh i saw really good curveball and one question i want to ask you just you know as far as pitching goes is do you change speeds with your breaking ball because it seemed like you had a couple different types of breaking balls uh i've got a curveball and slider okay Um, Curveball is more of, you know, first pitch, um, kind of just steal a strike. Hey, if you want to swing at it and try to square it up, go for it. Um, you know, yeah, fastball and then slider. Um, try to get to, to two strikes as quick as you can without, That's right. without you know, having three balls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I follow the, the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, as quick as possible. Like, if you get strike one, what do we need next? We need strike two. So let's just <laughs> – any way we can do it, let's just yeah. get there as quick as possible. Yeah. Any any uh, mentors in your life that helped you get to this point to where you've you know you feel like you're pretty efficient, you're pounding the zone, and you're pretty good command of your pitches. Yeah, um, um, you know my rookie year in Kansas City, I had Bruce Chen. Um, Frenchie, oh, yeah. Frenchie was a part of that team too. Both former Braves. Yeah. Um, so Bruce kind of just you know I was still starting at the time and just was like, hey man, like you're in the big leagues, like enjoy it, like have fun. You know it's gonna be okay. Just work hard. And then I went to Milwaukee and had Francisco Rodriguez, K-Rod, and he's really 
a big a big factor for me um you know he make sure your body's ready to throw if you take care of your body you're going to have a successful career it was mm -hmm. his main thing and you know we'd have to have our conversations at the end of the game of why'd you do this why'd you do that even nights he wouldn't pitch um you know, I learned a lot from Frankie of just reading swings and mm. if a guy fouls one off the visiting dugout, well, he's probably late, you know, so just little things like that. Mm. Um, and then in Kansas or uh, in San Francisco, I mean, that whole team, man, you just you got to play for Boach. Um, you know, you throw mm -hmm. to you get to throw to a guy like Buster. That's right. Um, you know, there's that was a lot of fun there in San Francisco with those guys. They're just, you know, an older team. Um, yeah, we had some good times. Mm -hmm. I know Alex um, had talked to Mark Melanson before yeah, Mark. before they signed you, and and said you know what, just to get his impressions of you because obviously you you guys have been teammates in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't remember Mark's exact statement, but I know he said yeah go this guy's a great guy go get this guy yeah. like he's going to make us better in every way and that kind of thing. So I was curious, did you talk with Mark or any of the Braves guys before signing? Two part question: Did you talk with any of them before signing about what it's like to play here? And since you signed, have you talked to any of the current Braves? Um, I did. I didn't talk to any of the guys. Um, I kind of talked to Mark a little bit last year, but it was just more of us just catching up when we came to town. Um, we hadn't seen him since he'd been traded, so it was like, hey, you know, how you doing, bud? You like it here? You know, just the basic conversation, nothing crazy. Um, and then, yeah, after I signed, he was probably one of the first guys that texted me and said, you know, I'm happy you're here, bud. You know, let's, you know, I was like, let's go win, let him, win a ring. <laughs> um, Darren O'Day texted me uh, uh, Friday. I left for vacation. Uh, I already had that plan for like a month before knowing this whole thing was going to happen. So it's kind of like it happened. And I just disappeared for a <laughs> weekend. But, uh, but Darren O'Day texted me while I was on the trip. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting to know the guys as soon as possible or playing golf or something, you know, just – you know, becoming a teammate, really. Where'd you go on vacation? We went to the Bahamas. Nice. Yeah, we just Very disappeared nice. real quick for a weekend. Um, 80 degrees, couldn't beat it. It nice. was awesome. <laughs> just you and you, and you just got engaged. Yeah, my fiance. Right? Yeah, we got engaged uh, July 4th this oh, past nice. year. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we hadn't had July 4th off since we were probably like 12. Um, so it was weird. <laughs> right, <laughs> it was right. weird. I didn't know what to do. Uh, so we went and watched some fireworks. There you go. Nice. Very nice. You got a date planned? Uh, November of next year. Okay. Um, yeah, it was kind of right around the trade deadline and the All Star game, and it was one of those like, "Hey, you know, it might get crazy here in a little bit, but you know, I'm in it with you." You know, so please yeah. say yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, my son's getting married on Saturday. Nice. And I've had three get married in 13 months. Holy cow! So yeah, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. I don't know how that worked <laughs> out that way, but part of me's like, "Okay, I'm just ready for this to be over with." But uh, but it's pretty exciting. So uh, well, congratulations. Yeah, I know that's. You. Um, now your fiance is she from here as well? She's from Columbus. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we uh, we just met at a we were, my friend was having a bonfire tacky Christmas sweater party, um, so we met there and you must have been really tacky we were, for her to yeah, know. Yeah, we, <laughs> we were looking. We were looking. I mean, we were looking good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, most the most hard hitting question I'm going to ask. How sick are you of Fresh Prince references and Independence Day and iRobot and any other Will Smith the actor entertainer oh. references? Um, how sick are you of those? I mean, it. I've just you know what I don't. Know. I've heard them all. So, yeah. but the it's always the guy that always says it to you always thinks he's the first person saying it to <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, he's right. laughing. Oh, before you're a great, Men in Black. I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so it's just one That's of those scary. things. It's just I get it. I know what my yeah. name is. So I just yeah, yep. Thanks, bud. And what is your nickname on the Sm team? Everybody calls me Smitty. Just or they Smitty. Call yeah. me Smitty. Yeah. So nothing, yeah, nothing real simple. too crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, you. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, I was going to follow that up with, like, is there at least, has there been anything recently that somebody said that maybe made you laugh? I'm like, there can't be. He's had to have heard them all <laughs> a been, zillion yeah, times. It's been happening probably since like elementary school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. every time you open, if you even open Twitter, it's probably just the oh, French yeah. Prince right. gifts. Yeah, people people send stuff to me thinking they're sending it to Will Smith. I'm like, nope. That's <laughs> well, wrong guy. <laughs> hey, it could be a lot worse, right? Yeah. I mean, my pitching coach in the minor leagues was Harry Rasmussen. Oh, so Harry, you know, he was a good pitcher for the Cardinals. He is so bad. He changed his name to Eric. And I got in a card when I was in the minor leagues with him. And it said, I said, is this you? And he goes, he goes, get rid of that card. And I'm like, he goes, I don't sign those. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, he's just, he got changed abused so name. much by wow. his name. He changed his name. So Dang, we all know we can bad. have it yeah, worse. It could yeah. be worse. I'll yeah, take the, just... I'll take the Will Smith references. It, right. it was somebody <laughs> suggested to us in the office earlier today when we knew we were going to have you on. They're like, you guys could do like a, 
but between two ferns thing where you both ask questions as like as if you thought he was the actor will smith i'm like it might be funny but he might also kill us and we might, right. that might be the end of our show yeah. so uh, you Flip know this table and walk out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't know somebody i don't think you start pulling that guy yeah so. no we're not uh, that funny anyway no no <laughs> we could no. pull that off exactly exactly <laughs> well it's uh it's always great to be able to see a team come together and of course you know we're Braves fans i'm i'm a former player but i'm still i work for the Braves I'm still a, a fan mm-hmm. uh, just like everybody else most of the people in this room that we want to see this team do well and we look we all have the water cooler in the office where we're all trying to decide you know what are our next moves what mm-hmm. do we need to do and i honestly i didn't see this one coming mm-hmm. and maybe because it was so soon that you know the postseason just seemed like it just ended mm-hmm. and i wasn't ready to start thinking about how we're going to put the you know what we're going to do to shape this team now last year alex did surprise us and i mean we we signed josh johnson just like that and we mm-hmm. thought oh here we go we're going to have this off season is going to be crazy and so there again he signed you right off the bat and was that i mean that seemed pretty quick. I mean, did you have time to evaluate, or did you already know, told your agency, hey, these are the few teams that I'm ready to talk to and get the right offer, boom, I'm ready to go, and I don't want to wait around? Yeah, it was more, yeah, I just I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted to win, um, and I knew I didn't want it to, to drag out or, or take a long time, and they kind of just took that information and, and, and got back to me. You know, nice. usually every day I'd have a conversation at the end of the, end of the night. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just a matter of we just knew what we wanted right off the bat and we were able to, to get it done right away, which I'm so much happier oh my gosh. this way, too. Like, I, you know, I know who I play for. You know, you can set up little things just like living in spring training and finding a place during the season. Just that's going to be so much easier now. Um, and, yeah, I'm, yeah, I was happy it happened pretty quick. Well, and you know, you know this better than Ricky and I, but the offseason hasn't been too kind for a lot of guys here recently with the weight that's mm-hmm. happened. And I would imagine that that weighs on the current player's mind. I never, we never actually went through that, but it just it has to weigh on you. So if you do knock that out and just get mentally prepared for what you need to do in February, then that's got to be yeah. just a great feeling. Yeah, let's get this business stuff out of the way and snap back into right. ball player mode and, and get ready to go. That's right. Well, we got a lot of we got not a lot, but we've got some spots that we still uh, hopefully we're targeting and we're gonna put the rest of this team together yeah and uh but there's a great foundation of mm-hmm. young guys and yeah. they had to be excited but as a when you were with the giants this year when you came into atlanta what were you thinking about these guys that they're really young and really good um you know we knew they had a chance to clinch and they clinched on us you know you never want to be the team that that gets clinched <laughs> on but they did and as you're walking off the field you know you know i was i knew i was going home in a week and these guys get to keep playing so it just it's that thing that drives you. Like, I, that's what I want. I want that. I want to be out there, you know, waving the flag around, giving everybody hugs, and and you know, go in the mm-hmm. clubhouse and have some fun. But, you know, that's, you know, that's going to happen here for a while, I believe, and that's you know another reason why I wanted to come mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Well, with the addition of you, we already have Mark Melance and Shane Graham. I mean, there's multiple proven closers now in in the Braves bullpen. What is your thought and mentality on? Closing as a as opposed to pitching in the seventh, or, or or does it matter to you at all? Or it doesn't really matter. I mean, I enjoyed closing. Closing was fun. Um, you know, I'm a real black and white kind of guy. I like to know why I didn't do well that night right away. And closing kind of gives you those answers relatively quick. Um, but I've always said too, if you if everybody in the bullpen just takes the mentality that they are the closer, they're just the closer of their inning. You just some guy just happens to have to get the last three outs. If we played ten innings, there'd be another guy back there. You know what I mean? It's just. Mm-hmm. If the bullpen can, you know, take that attitude, there's, I mean, you'll be successful for sure. You just go out there and do your job, handle the next guy. Once the last guy throws, high fives and move on, do it again tomorrow. When you were in Milwaukee, that certainly relied heavily on their bullpen for a period of time. Um, and the Giants, you had a great bullpen. I mean, we we, we got two of you guys, mm-hmm. you and Mark. And so I think this team's going to be modeled very similarly where we may have young pitchers that aren't going – you know, like the Verlanders are going to go eight, nine innings. They mm-hmm. may only go six, and then you guys might be go boom, seven, eight, nine. Mm-hmm. So that seems to be more of a trend for a lot of teams nowadays where starters are, you know, kind of taking the shorter route on yeah. it. And then they're relying very heavily in having three closers. So yeah. that I can understand why they would want you, and then that looks good for us. We've mm-hmm. got some a lot of talent out there and yeah. some young guys. A lot of really good arms down there, so <clears> – <throat> 
That's I'm right. Excited, excited to get to spring and start this thing. Yeah, me too. Last question for me, Will, and we thank you so much. I know you're going through all the interviews today, <laughs> so we appreciate you taking time with us. Um, so what? So now that this is out of the way, what are you doing the rest of the off season before spring training? Just uh, spending time with the family, yeah. or traveling? Yeah, or? the same old stuff I had planned. Uh, you know, work out, hunt, fish. You know, hang out. You know, with friends, and then get ready for spring training. Wing night. Wing night. Wing night. Now we're <laughs> well, talking. see, it's just like we, I mean, we're all pro guys in that area, and you know, we know what the season's like. So we try mm-hmm. to have the camaraderie in the off season. At least, you know, we work out in the morning, but everybody else kind of goes and do their own thing. But that's at least once a week. Try to get together with the fellas, and you know, it's just nice to goof off with them too. Nice. Yeah, are you working nice. at a home plate, or mm-hmm. where do you guys? Okay. Yeah, home plate down there. Um, yeah, yeah, EPI and home plate, and I've been going there for. Shoot, I don't even know how yeah. long. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great spot. Place. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, my last question is this: so there's always a debate a lot of times about when do I actually start throwing? How mm-hmm. much time do I take off? Where do you fall in that camp? I mean, are you a guy that waits till January to start throwing, or do you you may start working out, or do you like to start throwing earlier, playing catch, or where do you fall in that? I like. I guess I I'm like a yeah mid December kind of guy. I guess I guess that would be a little early, but it's very limited you know like hey just get the get it moving get the feel off your fingers again but you've made your 30 throws for that day that's all you need that day just but it's I guess it's early throwing but less you know I don't really crank it up really to spring training um but yeah just eat just nice and easy because I'm just a feel guy I like to still have the feel once I, if I've got the feel then I'll be fine well if you're relying on curveballs and sliders you you big better feel. be a feel guy, yeah, right? Big feel. <laughs> well, what I saw, loved, and uh, we wish you all the best and appreciate you stopping by behind the Braves, and hopefully we'll catch up with you during the season at some point. All right, sounds good. Thanks all for right. having me. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Yeah.